Hello everyone, my name is Devin Adams. I am a Fortinet certified trainer here at Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants in Tempe, Arizona, and I record these videos for my students, for my participants who have taken my class. So, I got a request, and that is how to apply uh, uh, wildcard groups on the Forda Manager slash Forda Analyzer. So what does this mean? Well, the last thing we want to do is maintain multiple credentials for multiple accounts across multiple devices, right? So we can use things like Radius or LDAP to maybe query like Active Directory to, to get our credentials from there. So that way we don't have to maintain it in two different places. So um, I know that I've done this on the FortiGate on the videos in the past, but I've never done it on the Forda Manager and the Forda Analyzer. So I went ahead and I cranked up this lab. Okay, real quick. I just spit it up. And uh, our goals for this video is going to be to create the necessary accounts and groups in Active Directory. And then we're going to configure the remote authentication server. And we're going to do an LDAP bind for that. So that way we don't have to create multiple accounts on the Forty Manager or on the Forty Analyzer. Then, after that, we'll go ahead and make an admin group, so, and based off of what's known as a wildcard, I don't think they actually call it wildcard in the GUI anymore, but that's essentially what it is, and uh, anyone that's in that group can essentially become an admin on the Ford Manager, so, and that's okay, because that way we can control access by AD. And in my humbled opinion, that's the way that we should be doing it. So, uh, but there's a caveat, at least in the older versions of the Forda Manager and the Forda Analyzer, and that is everyone within an organizational unit is by default a Forda admin. Well, we probably don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and apply a couple of different users and a couple of different groups and see if we can't get group filtering to work. And group filtering is where we can point to an actual group membership instead of just uh, an OU container in AD. So we'll go ahead and test that out. So I'll try to break this up in a couple of videos. I don't like these things being very long, uh, but let's go ahead and, and have at it. So uh, let's go ahead and log into our PC1. Okay, here we go. Maybe, <laughs> come on, here we go. Here's our PC1 over here. And as you guys can see, we have the Forda Manager and the Forda Analyzer kind of married together and we're using the default admin group. So uh, let me just go ahead and hit the home button here. And I can make this bigger for you guys too. So, so you can see it. So right now the only admin accounts that we have are going to be that default admin account. So, and that's not best practice. So we are going to want to set up a remote authentication server. So if we scroll down here to our admin panel, all right, and we do our remote authentication server, this is where we're going to do the LDAP bind. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize this. And let's set up the necessary accounts on the AD controller. So uh, you don't want to use a user account, in my humble opinion, for the LDAP bind, because what if that person gets fired or they move on, right? You're going to want to make the Forte Analyzer, Forte Manager their own account. In fact, it just needs to have domain user rights. So I'm going to create just a Fortinet generic one in case I want to use it on the FortiGates or whatever 40 products I want. That way, you know, if someone gets fired and they get removed from AD, they're not going to uh, suddenly lose that bind and no one can get into anything without that uh, static admin account. So let's go ahead and uh, let's look up user and computers. All right. Wow, it's so slow. Here we go. Sorry, guys. My computer is about as fast as a turtle in the in the Antarctic. Here we go. All right, and I've gone ahead and I've created an OU for our support team. Okay, so here we go. We have our support team. We have Bob and Frank. So Bob is going to be an admin for the both the FortiGate and the Forty Analyzer, and Frank is going to be a Forty Analyzer only. Uh, uh, person so admin before we do this let's go ahead and create the default admin accounts that's going to be bound to the our 40 products so I'm gonna just make a new account here I'm gonna call it uh, Fortinet right and then I'm gonna give it a super secret password that doesn't expire all right here we go 
because it's almost going to be acting like a service account and this is going to act as our LDAP bind so this will be able to query our directory services and essentially pass along their credentials to see if that user exists and in what group they exist in so uh, that's really all that we need for the LDAP bind to happen so let's go ahead and go back to our Forti manager so here we are uh, maybe here and let's create a new one so we're going to do LDAP server all right and we're just going to call it DC1 and that lives on 10.10.10.10 okay now here's the thing I made a Fortinet account and the login name just happened to be the same thing as the full name if you want to use the actual like user ID versus the full name you want to put Sam account name in there instead of CN alright so uh, just something to something to keep in mind there alright so um, now I am using 60 and 60 no 602 and I'm wondering if you have to use the user DN it looks like you are so how do how the heck do we get the user DN so there's a couple of ways to do this the distinguished name uh, we can either go to our user groups on our AD controller or we can essentially do a DS query it's gonna be all up to all up to us so um, let's take a look here on the FortiGates though, what's kind of neat about it is that you can actually just put in the, the username. I wonder if we can do that with 662. So let's try it. I don't know if it's going to work, but let's do a Fortinet. And let's do the password and see if it works. All right. Okay. So we really don't know if it's working or not. So let's go back in there. I love on the FortiGates, it's a whole heck of a lot easier. But this is essentially how you check to see if the LDAP bind worked or not. So, all right. If it pulls up our active directory structure, we know that the bind was successful. If not, we're going to have to go get that distinguished name from the actual domain controller itself. And it looks like it's not doing much. So, oh, bother. You can always hope, right, guys? So, all right, get out of here. So how do we find that distinguished name? So uh, I'm on a Windows 7 machine. I'm going to go back to my domain controller, and I'm going to do it from there so I can use the clipboard, the copy and paste. So here we go. I am going to, and there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, you can go to the advanced features, all right? And then after that, if you click the Fortinet account that we made, we should be able to find the distinguished name somewhere buried in here. Uh, it's been a while since I've had to do our sysadmin stuff. Uh, but if we just kind of poke around in here, we should be able to find it somewhere. Do, 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 do. Event, security, group, address, general, member of... Oh, come on. Object. Dial in. Ooh, here we go. Attribute editor. And if we come down here, we probably have a distinguished name somewhere here. And there it is. Boom. So that is the distinguished name that we need. Sure. So we're going to go ahead and hit copy. It's underneath the attribute editor. Another way that you can do it though is the DS query using the command prompt. So I'm going to show that also just for the sake of uh, simplicity here. So if you get a command prompt on the domain controller and you do DS query, all right, you're going to see here that we can do either an OU or a user, so on and so forth. So I'm going to do a DS query user and we're using the name and I'm gonna say Fortinet and there is also the distinguished name and then you can go ahead and you know highlight it from the command prompt to do it from there so just showing you two different ways to do it but let's now log into our 40 manager alright using good old Internet Explorer gotta love it alright we're going to go to HTTP. Oh, come on, Devin. This is why I don't do it at like 1 o'clock in the morning, which I always do. All right. We know. We know. Get out of here. So HTTPS. 
And it's giving me 10, 10, 10, 2, 5, 2. I think I made it. We should get a login page. Oh, no. Nah, I know. It's self-signed. Okay. Good times. Let's do our admin and our super secret password to get in. Oh, snap. Maybe I typed that too fast. Here we go. Now let's go ahead and fix that LDAP bind. And as you guys can see here, I've actually married my Forti Analyzer and Forti Manager together. I've done that in past videos. That way we only have one single pane of management. It's just for convenience. So uh, let's go to system settings now and let's go back to our LDAP settings and actually put in the distinguished name instead of just the username. Um, I might show later on in a video that on the 40 uh, on the FortiGate itself, you don't have to use the distinguished name anymore, which is really stinking convenient. So, here we go. All right. And that obviously did not work. So, we're going to come back here. And instead of Fortinet, we'll use the distinguished name. Boom. All right. Not too bad. And then our password should be the same. All right. And I wonder if I can just click it from here. Yeah, or I have to hit OK. I'm not too sure. So. Oh, look at that. Man, that is just, ugh. It's so far behind from what the FortiGate can do. Maybe I have to actually put in the distinguished name up there also, which I did not think you'd have to do. But let's try it out. So I'm going to say, hey, start your query from our domain components. There we go. All right. I'm going to do a copy. I'm going to do a paste. I'm going to say OK. And let's see if it works. And really the only way to verify that it works ahead of time is that if it actually pulls up the query. Boom. There you go. So it looks like still on the Forta Manager, you need to put in the distinguished name of the LDAP bind, which in this case was the Forta Net account that we made. Okay. And that's going to act as the account that's going to query the AD for our users that come in. All right. And it also looks like you have to do it for the DC also. Okay. So, um, and just for giggles, for giggles, <laughs> yeah, at least for me at, at four in the morning. It's not really 4 in the morning, but that's what my system clock says, and it feels like it. I'm going to show you what it feels like on the FortiGate, though. On the FortiGate, it's way simpler. So our FortiGate lives at 10.10.10.254, uh, all right? And we're going to set up an LDAP bind. Did I change the password on that? I think I did. On the FortiGate, I'm going to show you guys how much easier it is to do the same thing on the FortiGate. Now I wish Fortinet would catch up with, with, with the process here. Um, I don't think the newest version of FortiOS, by the way, likes Internet Explorer. Yeah, it's not really doing much of anything, is it? All right, no big deal. Let's go back to our PC1. All right. Let's move this over here. We'll make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little bit better. And let's go to our FortiGate using Chrome. All right. So we're going to set up an LDAP server now on the FortiGate. And I kind of impromptu this, so I hope this video isn't going too long. I apologize, guys. All right. Just to show you how much easier it is, though, on the FortiGate. Okay. And we'll just let that load up real quickly. So we'll go down to our user and devices, and we will go to our LDAP servers. All right. And what's nice, and this is this has been true since I believe 5.6 on the 40 OS, maybe 6, but I think it's 5.6. You don't have to put in the full distinguished name to do the bind. All you have to do is do the regular, all right? Uh, do the name of the LDAP server. We'll do our 10, oops, come on. 10.10.10.10. Are you going to work there, buddy? Okay. And then just put in the username. You don't need to have the distinguished name. So 
for the nets. And this is what I meant by also making one account for all your 40 products. Test connectivity. See how it was successful. Now we can go ahead and pick where in our tree we want to start our queries for our users, which is just so much more convenient than how we just had to do it on the 40 analyzer for the manager. So just something to keep up or to, to show you guys as an example. So on the FortiGate, it's way easier. And I, I was hoping in 6.2 on the Forti Manager, Forti Analyzer, because actually this is the first time I've really spit up 6.2 on the Forti Manager, Forti Analyzer, that it would have done that for us also. But nope, it looks like, once again, we'll have to put in our distinguished name and also our, our distinguished name full path of our end user in order to get the bind to work. So, But once again, once you hit here and you see it query, we know that we're in a good spot. So, all right, guys, in this video, we set up the two LDAP binds, one on the Forty Manager Analyzer. I married the two together so we can only do one device, one pane of glass. All right. I showed you guys how to do that in a previous video. And uh, we also did it on the Forty Manager, which you guys saw was a whole whole heck of a lot easier. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and take it a step further and actually create the admin accounts that we need on the Forta Manager so we don't have to create admins in two different places. So I'm going to stop it right here because it's going a little bit too long, but I'll see you guys soon and we'll, we'll wrap this up. So thanks.